The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Today I'm going to be joined by Scott Webb. He's the executive editor of Aqua Magazine. And Aqua Magazine is the premier magazine in the pool industry. We're going to go over details about the various issues that are published and also how you can subscribe to this free publication. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals trusted partners since 1963 providing quality products and services to make pool care easy, and solutions and expertise to do it right. So I'm joined today by Scott Webb. He's the executive editor of Aqua Magazine. How are you doing today, Scott? Great. How are you doing, David? Good. Hanging in there through all this mess, you know? I'm familiar with it. Yeah, last time I saw you was in February, and like we were saying, it's like a whole new world that we've moved into. Yeah, it was just on the eve of everything. Um, in fact, you know, the... About the, you know, see you later, David, is when all this stuff just happened. I don't know if that's connected or, or what. <laughs> Let's hope not, you know. Um, so you've been with Aqua Magazine pretty much forever. I looked at your bio. It says 2001. Yeah. So I think next year is your 20th year there. So can you tell us a little bit about Aqua Magazine? And first off, let's give listeners um, information on how they can actually find it online and become a subscriber to get the magazine in the mail. Right. It's just aquamagazine.com. And up in the right, when you get there, up in the right hand corner is a subscribe button. And you just click on that link and it you fill in your information. And we will start sending you the magazine. If you check the box, we'll start sending you our e news, which we call Aqua today. And it's a heck of a deal because it's free and um, you have all these people, you know, running around out here trying to get information for you and you don't have to pay anything. That's great. I know that your magazine has been on the top of the magazines I get all the time. I like the quality of the articles, the, the size of the magazine, just the quality of the paper itself. It's, it's a real publication. Well, thanks. We, we certainly are doing our best. We really are. Yeah, so how come magazine's been around for quite a while now? Yeah, it started in 1977. Uh, it started as Spa and Sauna, and they changed the name shortly thereafter to Aqua. But yeah, we're coming up on, you know, in a few years, we'll hit our 50th anniversary. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. For any, for any publication, that's amazing. I think what... There have been lean times and fat times. We've been on a good run. We've been growing about 10, 10 to 20% ever since the recession. And uh, we've just had a very good run in the last, say, 13 years. Yeah, yeah, I think a part of that is the fact that Aqua Magazine appeals to all different sectors. And if you look at the features that you offer, you have retail, builder, service, hot tub, pools, and, and uh, new products. And I think no matter what part of the industry you're in, there's something in each issue for you. Yeah, we we look at it. I mean, we we think about this every day, and we talk about it amongst ourselves. You know, how do we really get to the heart of the matter for the fifteen thousand you know sub subscribers that we have to the print and digital, and and the people on the you know we have like one point five million uh, page views per year on our website. So we're always just trying to get to what would interest them and what they want to know about for their jobs. Yeah, and for me, like, I, you know, I'm not really into building pools, but I really like reading the articles on, you know, like replacing the skimmer and things that you published in the past and um, just the different kind of builds that you have. And it's not my sector, but the articles are so interesting that I'll read things out of my sector just because the fact that it's really interesting to me to see that in the magazine. And again, I think that's the appeal of it. Even if you're not in that particular sector. Maybe you don't do pool service. You're just a builder. But it's good to see how the service guys are doing out there. Yeah, we, we, we try to look at it like, okay, what are the challenges that you're facing? And we try to, to provide some practical stuff for the people who are actually replacing the skimmer, but also enough that 
would you know you'd find it interesting if you're doing something else in the industry yeah i think that's one of the keys of the magazine is that um the articles are so well done um and you have a lot of um, high profile writers terry arco i had him on the podcast before mm-hmm. um and these are guys that have been in the industry forever basically and so it's not just people that are just writing articles to fill up the magazine these are actual experts writing these articles yeah we 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 certainly do. We, we think about that all the time and try to get the people who understand their part of the industry best in here talking to us. Uh, yeah. And then just try to present that as, as entertaining and interesting and easy to digest as we possibly can. That's that's what we try to do every day. And one of the things that I always preach is that knowledge is the key to success in any sector of the industry. And the more you read, the more you can bring in, the better you're going to be at your job. And I think, again, another thing, the reason why Aqua Magazine is so relevant. Yeah, I, um, an understanding, I mean, the, the, there's, there's knowledge, but then as you, as you acquire that over time, and if you think about it, you finally get to understanding and wisdom. And that's what we're really searching for, uh, both in our staff, but also in the people that we talk to, people who actually have what I would call industry wisdom, like as you mentioned, Terry Arco, uh, Eric Herman, who continues to work with us, uh, and just different people like Dan Lenz is a, what I would call a wise man of the industry. Uh, people who've just been in it and thought about it long enough to develop a higher level of understanding. Yeah, I think, again, that's what sets you apart from other publications in the industry. Um, and then let's talk about the different issues you have. I looked at your 2021 calendar, and each issue kind of has a theme to it, which I also like the fact that it's all different. So it's not where you're going to get, a, you know, a static kind of magazine every month. So you have different themes, and I'll just run down the calendar here, and then you can touch on anything that sticks out. So January, you have the pool and spa show, which I don't know what's going to happen yeah. <laughs> going forward on, yeah. on that one. <laughs> so... Uh, which is unfortunate because I really love the pool shows. I know, me too. Uh, then you have February is a small business marketing. March is a labor issue. April is the Aqua 100 issue. May is the state of the industry, which is one of my favorite ones, by the way, because you go through how the industry is doing and projections for the future. Um, then you have June, outdoor living. July is a DOE issue. I'm not sure what that is. August, renovation. Um, and then you have the annual hot tub, hot water issue. And then the FATA Awards of Excellence. I call it FATA. Um, <laughs> maybe it'll catch on. Uh, pool, November is the Pool Expo issue, and then December is the Buyer's Guide. And that, I think the Buyer's Guide, to me, is my favorite, too, because I like looking at the products on there. And you list everything, you know, manufacturers yeah. and where you can, everything's in that issue. It's almost like a, um, like a well, it is a Buyer's Guide, I guess. It's yeah. a good title for it. So... You want to run down some of the, why you have it specifically every month, something different? Sure. Um, you know, we, we go over this again and again. We're trying to reach for uh, the biggest issues in the industry. I mean, if you were to ask me today what I think the biggest two issues in the industry are, I would say uh, DOE and labor. DOE stands for uh, the Department of Energy's new pump regulations. Uh-huh which uh, are going to, dramat- I mean, that's going to be the biggest change in the industry since BGB. Uh, w- when those regulations come into place, you will not be able to buy 80% of the current pump models that are sold. So those are all single speed pumps that did not meet the criteria. So for a whole bunch of people out there, you're you're going to go to uh, your distributor, you'll go to Pool Corp or, or wherever you're going, and you're going to say, yeah, I want you know model XJ7. And they'll say, I'm sorry, sir, but we uh, we don't we, we can't sell those anymore uh, and we'll never be able to sell them again. And, you know, that for those single speed pumps that fall, you know, that 70 to 80 percent of the market that are, will be taken off the shelves. Well, actually they won't be taken off the shelves. They'll sell the remaining inventory, uh, but then you won't be able to make them anymore. 
And that's going to be a big adjustment for all those people. So we, we've been talking about this as much as we possibly can, but we're going to, and we'll talk about it all the way up to July 19th when that formally takes effect. But we're also making that an entire issue because there's just a lot of people out there who are going to need help in that transition from, you know, they got to talk to the customers. They got to, you know, explain this to the customer why they can't replace the $300 single speed pump that they've been replacing. Uh, they're going to have to now spend $1,500, dollars $2, for a variable speed model because that's just the only option. So there's a lot to talk about there, and we'll we'll be talking about that all year and and certainly through July. And then uh, <clears throat> we mentioned the labor. The labor issue is just huge for everybody. Um, it's been huge, and I think COVID gave it a whole bunch of new facets. Uh, it was it was already I thought probably the biggest issue in the industry, and now. Uh, we have a whole new wrinkle with the increased demand and the changes in the labor force. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people out of work. There's a whole bunch of service sector people and people in different industries that were smacked down by COVID who are now in the labor pool that weren't before. And you have at the same time a whole lot of builders and some service companies and uh, some retailers who are trying to solve their labor problems. So we'll be getting into that in a big way. Yeah, and then with the 1099, Uber just got uh, mm. shot down in California yesterday, exactly. actually. And um, so the 1099 thing is pretty much dead. Right. In California, it's a whole different thing. Um, and that, I, I feel like that's an evolving, well, it is, because as you're pointing out, it, it we just had the new ruling. I don't know if that's the end of the final word or, you know, we'll, we'll be covering that too. Yeah. And um, I know that there's a ballot measure here in California that I think it's Prop 20. I don't remember the exact proposition. I think it was 22 or 24 was going to overrule or try to overturn that. Um, but just for the Uber driver. So that doesn't affect any of the pool industry. So that, that one's not going to help anybody except Uber and Lyft. Um, right. And so it's really a tough Thing in California, I get asked all the time by the guys here, how do, what do they have to do? And then putting someone on payroll is really expensive in California. Yeah. Um, if you pay someone four thousand a month, you're as an employer, you're paying eight hundred dollars in, in taxes for for that one employee. So plus workers comp and, for ten ninety nine, it was much easier just to pay them straight and let them deal with it. So, um, it's a it's a pretty bad pretty bad thing for california i think that's probably going to move across the nation california always sets the right. precedent yeah that's that's what we're thinking so many other things like for instance uh pump efficiency regulations really started in california and eventually spread through the entire country so yeah we'll be looking at that like you know california but everyone else needs to start to think about this yeah, for sure. And then you mentioned the DOE. Now I know what that stands for. Um, I was I was emailing U.S. Motors, and I, I was asking him a question about one of their pumps. And then I, I mentioned that July 19th deadline. And I said, well, what are you guys going to do then? And they said, well, we're not going to be able to sell motors anymore. Um, so <laughs> that was his answer. So it was like, Ooh. you know, just for the manufacturer standpoint, that's, I mean, his answer was pretty cut and dry. But yeah. behind that is a whole layer of, well, where's all that, where are they going to get that money that they're losing now? You know, that's, right. that's huge, you know? Yeah, it is, yeah. I think for any new product, like I was just talking to a software company that's coming out, and they're excited about the pool show circuit because they want to get their software out there. Mm -hmm. um, but if there is no pool show circuit, um, new products, there's really nowhere to put them. And I think that's what makes um, what you do and what I do more significant now because now the only way to get the product out there is through an ad in the magazine or an article by you yeah or maybe a podcast or a video because the old way of having you know 2,000 pool guys walking past your booth we don't know right we don't know the timeline on that I mean <clears throat> you talk to people and people are some people are optimistic that we're through this soon and some people aren't you know nobody knows 
Yeah, and that's one of the unknowns in the industry. But I think, I guess, a silver lining is that everyone I've talked to, including myself, you know, at the business is better um, in most areas because of everyone staying home. Oh, sure. yeah. So it's not like total doom and gloom for the pool oh. industry. No, it's um, a historic year. Yeah. I, I mean, the, as we've, we've, uh, we just put out a, a story about this. This will be the greatest year in pool and spa history in terms of just growth on the previous year. If, uh, and that's, we're, we're seeing that come in from everywhere. The, the best year had been 1983 with a 16% growth in the, um, in the pool sector. Uh, but I think we'll beat that this year. I mean, every builder you talk to is booked for a, you know, some of them a year, some of them more than a year. Yeah, a, the local one here is eight months out right now as far mm. as the build. So um, it's pretty incredible. I think the first three weeks of the of the um, pandemic, it was pretty much radio silence as far as everything looked like it was going to go really bad. Mm-hmm. But then when everyone's staying at home and realizing, hey, the kids are in the house all day. Let's get them out of here. What yeah. can we do? You know, look at the above ground pool sales. I think they're out of stock all through next year, I heard. Yeah, that's right. They're scrambling to, you know, to get their supply lines worked out so that they can try to meet that demand. And and then and there's other wrinkles that happen all the time. Like, for instance, the trichlor tablet shortage that's developing. Um, <laughs> I talked to a manufacturer this summer and we were talking about something. And somehow we got on the uh, subject of, uh, and this was just chemicals. And they were saying, well, we've, we've had to prioritize certain customers because we can't ship to all our customers. I mean, we, we can't, before we would just ship out as much stuff as people requested. And then they had to kind of, you know, prioritize that, which is crazy to think about, um, I never thought I would see that in my lifetime, frankly. Yeah, I mean, I have guys in Texas and Florida driving all through the city looking for tablets. I mean, that was a couple of weeks ago. Now it's cooling off. Um, but think about next year when you have, you know, a few hundred thousand above ground pools that are being installed and you have all the new pool builds coming online. And then you have the factory in Louisiana that burned to the ground. You yeah. know, you ha- you're going to have a, a serious chem- chemistry chemistry chemical shortage i think all around because of the amount of pools out there and the usage is going to go up because people i'm not sure about travel next year i didn't i didn't go anywhere this year myself because it's just crazy and so being at home is going to probably be going into next year to some degree and it's just going to be it and then the commercial pools are reopen up and you have all the things that are going to cause a strain on the system so good and bad i think in, in a way True. I, I think that the suppliers are scrambling. I mean, those people are, are working super hard when I, I try to get through to them and, and they're just super busy trying to solve that that issue. So, I mean, I, I think they're going to try like heck to to have fully stocked uh, supplies for next year. Uh, and I, I hope they do. Uh, yeah, but they're working on it. Yeah, so, so again, so many issues to, to go through. And again, that's why Alka Magazine is so relevant because you cover a lot of these things in there. And a lot of the guys wouldn't get information any other way except through a publication. And you mentioned you had 15,000 subscribers to the print issue. You know, the, I think your website is overlooked as a resource. If you go on your website, um, you have so much content on there for the Pool Pro. If you're just starting out and you're looking for solutions to problems your website has um like your content library tab has so many articles in there that if you're new you can just stay on your website for for days and and learn so much yeah um you know it it really it contains everything we've ever written and well okay that's only back to like 1998 but um there's an awful lot of material on fiberglass pools or chemistry or a, a you know shock or whatever you might need, and it's organized uh, in, in the content library. It sort of uh, just organizes it really well, like a library. So all you got to do is click on a subject like fiberglass pools or in-ground uh, you know vinyl liner pools or something that you're interested in, and then you have 20 stories right up to the the story we wrote last month. Uh, on that topic 
and you can really quickly access a lot of experts just talking about that topic. Yeah, pretty amazing. I think it's, again, an overlook. People don't think that you have those kind of resources available, um, but the website definitely does. And we mentioned the the pool shows and maybe the manufacturers or small producers won't be able to showcase their product. And I think one thing that your magazine offers, and I think it's pretty much ad supported, right? It's how you make your revenue. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yep. And so, I mean, advertising, if you have a new product coming out, I think in lieu of the pool show, you know, an, a, an ad in your magazine would be a great way to reach an audience because you also do the email. You want to explain just to someone who's maybe interested in advertising, how you kind of put their product out there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I did want to mention, we're closing in on 2 million uh, page views per year on the website. So we did, um, and, th and that's actually literally from all over the world. We get people from Australia to Europe to, um, to wherever. So um, that is a good resource that's, I think, pretty well used. Um, when it comes to um, uh, for someone who wants to advertise, we have these digital products, which are a really good deal. We we do a lot of digital work, and we also have the print products. Um, and the way to, to to go about that is just click in the corner of the web page. It just says advertise, and it has everything we're planning on doing. The people who uh, you should uh, talk to to um, yeah, custom fit whatever we could do to whatever your needs are yeah that's, i think it's a great resource that you have available because again to get your product out there you need to really have other avenues um, besides just the pool shows i mean you're in print 12 issues a year you have your website with 2 million hits which is a phenomenal amount of hits by the way um i, I don't want to downplay the fact that the website um, is not being used. I'm just saying that the resources there are probably overlooked a lot of times for people that don't know about you. That's a good point. It is. Uh, it, there's no sense if you're a new person, you know, trying to learn, say, service, to not take advantage of the educational opportunities, you know, both from us, but also, you know, from training out in the uh, in the industry. Uh, that's really come a long way. And you can really rise up in this profession with a little bit of education. And you see it all the time. Yeah, I think that's so true. I think um, a lot of people are afraid to even get into the industry because it seems overwhelming at one point. But the more you read and the more you do it and the more you look at the resources, it becomes easier like any field. I always use the example, if they hire me at Joanne's Fabric, you know, the learning curve. <laughs> would be tremendous for me, you know? Yeah. I'd have a bunch of old ladies yelling at me, you know? they would be using terms that, you know, like, you know, what? <laughs> so it's like anything you get into, you have to learn the, the industry. And um, I think it seems overwhelming, but it's not. And then um, why don't we just give the uh, listeners your website again so that they, they can easily access that and subscribe to your magazine? Because I think getting the print magazine every month, I really look forward to getting it. Um, I only get trade magazines anyway, and so I, I like getting your magazine in the mail. And let's give that plug one more time to the website. Oh, well, thanks. And thanks, David, for that compliment. Um, but the website's just aquamagazine.com. And like I said, if you go to the subscribe button in the corner, you can get it in print at your location for free, but you can also uh, get the uh, digital uh, e news product which contains everything that's in the uh, magazine, uh, and you know you can get that as long as you want. If you don't want to get it, you don't um, you don't have to. One of the big differences between Aqua and other magazines is we are very tight and careful with our subscribers of both print and uh, our digital products. We, re we ask them every year whether they want to continue to receive this. If they don't, we take them off the list and we keep uh, we just keep a, a, an audience of people who have requested uh, this information. And um, we have that third party audited every year, which we pay for a third party to make sure that uh, our sub subscription list remains tight and and there's no fat in it. 
Yeah, and I think that's important. Again, if you're thinking about advertising, you want to make sure that the audience is pool service pros, builders, retailers in the industry to get your money's worth. You don't want to have, like you said, people that aren't even going to look at your product in those numbers. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and so, and again, I guess that goes back to the tremendous work that, to get a magazine out every month. I wouldn't even have no idea <laughs> how to do that. So I'll say this. If you can't do it if you don't think it's fun. Like, we have a team that we really do enjoy and we, you know, our team chemistry is huge. We have to like working together and we have to talk a lot. Uh, but if you can make it fun and we do, then it, it's, it's just, I've been in it for, you know, 20 years here at Aqua and uh, I am hoping to do this for a long time because I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Well, you do a great job there, Scott, for sure. Thanks. Thanks, David. Well, thanks for taking the time to go over your magazine. And I think you're going to, you know, hopefully get more hits and more subscribers out of this. And definitely there's no reason not to try this free resource. If you're a pool service tech or builder or getting into the industry, retail store owner, this is a great resource. Thanks, David. And I love talking to you anytime. And I say this often, and I'll say it again here, that I think education is the key to being successful in any aspect of the pool industry. The more education you have, the more knowledge you have, the better you're going to be at whatever you do in the industry. If you do pool service, the more chemistry knowledge you have, the better you're going to serve your clients, the more you're going to increase your business. And so I think whatever capacity you're in the pool industry in, you definitely want to pick up a copy of Aqua Magazine and further your education and your knowledge base. And if you're interested in other podcast episodes, you can go to my website, swimmingprolearning.com, click on the podcast icon, and you can scroll down and listen to the other podcasts I have. With over 485 podcasts currently published, you can definitely find something that will interest you and educate you about the pool service industry from my podcast show. And again, you can just go to my website, swimmingprolearning.com, and click on that podcast icon. If you're in the industry and you want to enhance your business or you're starting out, definitely check out my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. A lot of great benefits for joining that program, including a 10% discount on your general liability insurance, plus the ability to call me and text me in real time. If you're interested in that, again, you can find out more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right.